one's coming out to the right. There's a girl right above. You gonna take one, Chad? Yeah, the one on the right. Ready? Hold on. Okay, I'm ready. Ready? Yep. Hold on, hold on. Just give me a sec. Okay, ready. Ready. Drilled him. Yeah. Shoot. I mean, look back. It definitely spined him. Yeah, he dropped. You got him. He's down? Yeah. Dude, that was a stud. Heck yeah. Yeah, who's down right there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> And just like, cool. that. <laughs> just like that, just like that, Yes! First, First wine access. Yeah. Woo! Dude, this is cool. This is like one of my oh. favorite places. Right here in the high country. We've hunted this a couple times. Saw some really good bucks in this brushy stuff. We came over the rise just enough. It's like, boom, yeah. big buck. Just like that. We were just talking about. Chad's like, you going to shoot him? I'm like, you go shoot yeah. him. Dude. <laughs> so, thanks, bro. Nice shot, too. Okay. First one. Looked like a tank. Let's go, let's go get our hands on it. It looks huh? like a tank, yeah. yeah let's go. Do. We're gonna we're gonna buzz over there and get yes. them guys. But yeah, welcome to Hawaii. We got a whole bunch of hunts and uh just wanna say thanks to Nick and thanks, welcome Nick. to Chad Money. Yeah. Let's do this. Well, trying to find our way across the gulch. To Chad's buck. Yeah, like they definitely go left because there's kind of a cut right there. And it's so steep. <laughs> A little bit of a drop off here, but I think we can get through. Steep, steep, steep. <laughs> um, not really, but a little bit of a drop. Just gotta. <laughs> Gotta get down here. I always wanted to cross this gulch and see what the heck, what it's like down in this bottom. Look how pretty it is down here. Freaking sweet. His buck is somewhere right over here. A little nervous, like right when he dumped him, he kind of went down in this ravine. So we're just kind of cruising slow, but I thought he was right here somewhere. He might even have been. I think he was on his face. Right oh, I see his antlers. I see his antlers. Yeah. They blend in pretty good to the left of that bush right up there in the center with all the yellow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is gonna be one of the best bucks I've seen down, I think. I don't know, maybe we got excited. I know it's a dang good one. It has the potential to be one of the best I've seen up here. <laughs> Chad's first Hawaiian actor yes. too. Dude, I love these things. They are so oh, cool. He's got dark antlers. One of my favorite darker than I thought. That's a great buck. <laughs> That's a stud. Look at the cotto on the other side. Bro, oh, that's a good one. Dude, look at that. Money. That's a freaking look tank. Look at the mass on that side. Oh, absolutely beautiful, Buck. Look at that. Yeah, these things yeah. are a dead giveaway right here. That's a great buck, dude. So we're looking Look for, boys. Look how pretty it is up here, too. Yeah, I know. That's what makes it so much better. Like, I don't know, this is my first time hunting in Hawaii, so I always just think of the beach, and I've always, like, looked up and, like, seen this and thought there's gotta be some cool stuff up there. It's my first time. Blown away, man. It is absolutely beautiful. Oh, I appreciate it, Eric. Yeah, yeah. Dude, look at this thing. Good mass. Length. That's a pretty buck. Yeah. <laughs> so cool, Look bro. at that, dude. I love these things. What a cool animal. Just such a beautiful animal. I start to see it perfect right here. A bit high, but. Yeah, he was just standing like oh. right here. <laughs> Can we give it the whoa? Yeah. Oh, man. Nice work, money. Thank you, sir. Now we get to work. Yeah, now we get to eat. Cutting, yeah. 
I know I'm excited. I think I'm gonna bring uh, some of the back straps back and grill it up for the family when we get back either probably tomorrow. Yeah. Give it like a like a lunch or something if we're not out here hunting, but nice dude. This is a stud. Deciding on uh, how to cut them up. We are not able to get the side by side down to them this time, so we're gonna quarter them up, make it quick. But uh, I'm using this new knife. Had to show it to you guys. So Ben, aka Shed Crazy, made his own replaceable blade knife. So I think he named it the Breakdown. Maybe that's why it's called the Breakdown on there. But it's also custom engraved on the blade part. I should show that to you guys. Hold on. Let me redo that. So. Ben's new knife. Check this out. I'm not left-handed. <laughs> Look, shed crazy on the blade. This takes the 60 XT blade, replaceable blade. Any of them fit. Um, but we're going to get working on this buck real quick. Quarter him up and get him out of here. But yeah, had to show some love to uh, Ben. And these are available on his website if they have not already sold out. Check them out. All right. Success, baby. Moving on. Uh, we've got an hour, a little over an hour of daylight. So we're going to go try to find another. but it's really cool with the clouds up here right now. Yeah, there's always a chance to see another big one. Oh. That's the holy grail of that axis deer out here. 36. It's so even too. Are they both 36? Yeah, 36 and a quarter by 36. Really? Hold that straight up. Yeah. So this is the deadhead that Nick and his buddy found just recently, wasn't it? Yeah, a few months ago too. Yeah, that's a tank. Grab that thing. They're so dense. Huh? <laughs> oh, I love that. It's so big. All these pigs. Oh yeah. It's about as pretty as they get right there. It's huge. All right, we're gonna see. We're gonna see what Chad got. If this is 36, what's yours, Chad? 32. Pretty close. Nick always has the honor to tape them. It's always fun, and this this is what's helpful is taping them for field judging because it's yeah. tricky for us new guys who haven't seen a ton of them. Uh huh. A thirty incher can look giant to us. Man, is he even gonna? He doesn't go back a lot. Yeah, huh? he doesn't have a lot of drop back. But uh -oh. uh, thirty one and a half. Okay. We got the dirty thirty. Got That's dirty. cool. First try. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. He's got an amazing coddle point on this side. Mm -hmm. That's not common out here. Made the 32. He made 32. Yeah. I can see right at the tip. Yeah, but look at that coddle. Yeah. That's nice. That Hold that sucker up. Yeah, there he is. He's going to be tasty. Yeah. Can't wait. We'll be eating back straps. I know, I cannot wait to grill some of this up. All right, we're going to clean up our mess and probably call it a night and do it again. Yeah. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to day two out here in Hawaii. We got uh, Nick and Chad waiting on me, so we're ready to do the dang thing again. Get that vlog, dude. <laughs> What's up, money? About that vlog life? Money I'm drove. about that blog life. The blog. <laughs> Funny story. Um, Chad flew into Utah years was, ago. Yeah, was you remember what ago. year that was? Flew to Utah. Like four years ago. Maybe, maybe five. longer. Yeah. Anyways, we gave him a crash course on YouTube. He did his very first video and he walks in on with one of these cameras. He's like, <laughs> hey guys, so I'm pretty new to this blog. <laughs> here's my first blog. Yeah, here's my first blog. <laughs> but uh, he's been U doing YouTube ever since. It kind of has its ups and downs. Yeah, you definitely get way busier with fins and feathers and everything and it slows, but we're still filming. I got tons of content. I just need the editing. <laughs> I need somebody to do that for me. If anyone no, for reals, huh? uh, is looking for a job, hit me up. I need an editor. Chad needs a content creator and manager. So uh, if you're in the California area, hit him up. Spotted out ahead of us. We're just trying to 
confirm there's two good bucks up here, but I always like Nick to look at them because if Nick gets excited, you know it's good. If he doesn't, <laughs> you should probably hold your bullets. He said, shoot that one. Yeah. I know it's not bad, but I don't know how good it is. I don't think he's 30. Really? No. We suck at this. Money? Both? A lot of bucks out here. So many. It's so crazy. Like I knew that listening to you there was going to be a lot, but this is like insane. <laughs> Lots of pigs, too. Gosh. Big group of pigs. Well, we're just going to keep glassing and keep moving, but another beautiful day up here. It's amazing up here. See him down there. There's one coming out right now. Still pouring out of here. Oh, I see him down below raking the tree. See him tearing it up down there? Where that one's walking on the ridge? Yeah. To the right of it down below. I see brush just going nuts. Over the top of that. He's stopped now. Oh, there he is right there. You can turn it up. No, I don't. don't even know Look on the screen. I can see his tips keep coming up. Right there. I see. Oh, yeah, I see his tips. Yeah. That's him. Will you stop him? Aim a little high with that guy. Just a few inches. Smoked him? <laughs> I forgot my earplugs. Good recovery. <laughs> Yeah, see, it shoots a little bit low. Yeah. Like, that. <laughs> like you just dropped him? Yeah. <laughs> that feels good. Got it all on here, <laughs> Dude, nice. When he I came up, I was like, oh, there he is. And I wasn't quite ready. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for. All right, well, we made a quick work of that one. My ears are blasted. I forgot my I forgot my ear protection. I forgot. Oh, it. <laughs> I made sure to stand way back so that I could film. Yeah. Dude, my ears always ring for days. My right ear is, is toast, dude. <laughs> but he dropped? Dropped Drop. him. So I shot first and pretty sure I hit low. And Nick reminded me um, this gun these guys had here last week was shooting low. So I just held it over his shoulder. B-Mac tossed Dropped it down the ridge is what I heard. So, yeah. <laughs> just, just. But, uh, look, there's a bunch up there in the sun by the, by the gore. So, yeah, we're going to go recover this one, but we're going to keep hunting. I don't know if he's the tallest buck, but he had big dark antlers, and I've always, always, always wanted to shoot one with dark antlers and white tips. And mm -hmm. I think he's got that look, right? Yeah, so I think so. Heck yeah, guys. Let's go find him. This made for a quick recovery. We actually were able to get the side-by-side -side right here at the fence. And this deer is literally right there across the gulch. So let's go check him out. <laughs> guys, I've said it every time I come out here. This is so fun and we're so fortunate to be able just to have the opportunity to come do this with Nick. Every time I come, it's a... It's an adventure and it's a good time. So we got the guys coming down. All right. Just 
Sweet. Just what I liked. Dark. Dark, dark antlers with white tips. <laughs> he's cool. Man, he's got cool color. He's busted on his G1. Chipped up a little bit. Fighter. Yeah, there he is, guys. This is the biggest one in this group. We knew he was narrow and tall, but... And that he had them dark antlers. Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome, bro. Dude, so dark. Chocolate. This is yeah. for sure the darkest one I've ever killed. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Yeah, that one side's much longer. Probably pushing 30 maybe. Oh yeah, that's right. On that side. So anyways, well I'm stoked guys. We're not going to spend a ton of time here because we still got the morning hunt. So we're going to probably just drag them to the side by side. But uh, again, thanks Nick. Thanks Monty. Awesome. <laughs> Let's take care of this thing and get out of here. They're so cool, dude. So cool. I have one of the dark antlered one. Got him. <laughs> I want a heavy one. Yeah. Ah. We're going to have to be patient yeah. if we really want a heavy one. Super cool animals. So. Gosh dang. <laughs> Axis are cool. I love them. They're so pretty. Honestly, he has a nice cape. I know. He's beautiful. Usually those big old ones, they start to get more gray. Uh -huh. Right, we made it back to the uh, house and uh, we've got some meat to take care of. We got my buck in the back and then uh, Chad's buck in the fridge. So we're gonna do some butcher work. Um, take care of it and vacuum seal a whole bunch of it. It'll be a lot easier to fly out of here when it's vacuum sealed and compressed. So that's what we're gonna do now. And just again, a reminder how good your buck is. <laughs> He's sweet. It's so cool. I love these things. So, let the dirty work begin. Eric doesn't even like to hunt. He hates this. Wait out. We're gonna bend it, send it, baby. I'm gonna go down into this gulch. Right here, and uh, set up a tree saddle. It's nice because it's fairly open for a bottom. Look at that. Look at this right here. So every time we push them, they go through right here. Really? Yeah. So I'm gonna go climb in the tree. I got my tree saddle and climbing sticks. And uh, these guys are gonna, gonna hike through the gulch, bow hunt with Chad, and I'll be somewhere down in this mess. So I'm gonna go get set up and then take these guys to the top. So we got a lot of work to do in a short amount of time. So let's go. Let's do it. A lot of shot opportunities this way and some shot opportunities this way. This branch is kind of in the way for some of that, but it might also give me some cover. So that could be helpful. Um, I'm not that high, but I'm high enough.
no action for me tonight except those stinking goats they uh they came right below me and uh saw me and then just sat there and made farting sounds all night like for the last 10 minutes of like perfect light so they're still up there on the skyline i'm gonna let them buzz off and get down here the good news is chad shot a deer i'm just gonna get down while i still have daylight this spot's just not popping tonight and those guys i don't think those guys ever made a chance to uh like make a push down the uh gulch because they shot a buck good job money <laughs> i'm sure he's stoked let's go check it out What's the deal? Do -do 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 -do. You got it done, baby. Do you see anything in there? Uh -oh. Some goats. You guys didn't push them down? I was trying. They you started to shoot they them all. They kept running up and out. You can't just shoot them all. <laughs> Dude, it was so awesome in there. Holy cow. That was rolling. cool. Oh. How'd it go down? We were just cru cruising along slow, and uh, he spots a, a doe bedded, like, I don't even know how, at least 120, maybe 150 yards. And I'm like, where the hell do you see that? And I pull up my bino and it's like this tiny little dot, like looking, I think it was looking actually at us. And so we sit there and she calms, around, uh, calms down and, and goes back to looking. So I get down and start crawling. And then we start seeing bucks. There was like three or four that we could no see way. right there. Yeah. And we didn't know, but on the other side of that was just a whole huge group of them. And so I got down on my hands and knees and crawled. Um, I don't even know how far, but I got to 90. was the closest I could get and she spotted me. And she stands up, and then everything stands up. And my buck's just standing there broadside, right behind the shoulder. It's a smart <laughs> double lung. He runs, he runs like 80, 100 yards, and they all go up, down and up and, and start barking. And all of a sudden, like 30 seconds later, we hear a crash. No way. Yeah. I'm guessing we, we could probably drag that one up and out, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah I, all I saw was goats, and they just started going. <laughs> <laughs> Just staring at me like 20 yards away. I'm like, yeah, this ain't good. <laughs> Stupid goats. Stupid goats. We made it to Chad's buck. Dude, that's so cool. <laughs> yes. Heck yeah, dude. Look at that shot. That's the money shot. Johnny Mendez with the money shot. Dude, I'm so excited. This is Heck so yeah, good. man. Yeah, baby. Well, that's cool. There it is. He's got a really pretty even rack. Yeah, good cape too. Pull that sucker up there just a little bit. Right. Yeah. There he is, baby. <laughs> <laughs> how I don't cool. care how big or how small. These, these things are just so awesome, man. Like, such a beautiful cape. All the spots. Yeah, he's pretty. Just smells super ruddy. Yeah, I love it. All right, guys, it's the last day here in Maui. Just found a shooter buck and he looks bedded, so this typically doesn't happen. So we're gonna take advantage of it, try to take our time, film a good little hunt for you guys. So nice tall buck with good caudal points. We got the wind in our favor, so we're trying to cut the distance real quick. Let's do it. Okay, I'm ready.
perfect shot. Really? Perfect. Dude, you drilled him. Really? Yeah. Nice, Come watch dude. this. <laughs> Guys, finally, literally a perfect setup. <laughs> Been waiting for an opportunity like that with Nick where we can just sneak in, take our time, and uh, make it happen. And you don't, I haven't seen the bucks bedded, the big ones bedded very often. Nick says I slammed him, so let's check it out. Oh, dude, killer shot. Money shot. He spun around, I had no clue. Wow, dude, <laughs> bro, Big deal. thank you. That was like a dream come true. Look, Nick called to get him to stand, and I was ready, man. Oh, oh he's so dead, dude. He's so dead, Nick. You're so good. Oh my gosh, guys. This has been a blast. Spending time out here with Nick. Took the first few days to really focus on Chad. I wanted him to get a good one and he did that. Then he got a great one with his bow. And Nick could see these deer um, right through the trees. He's got the eyes for him. I'll tell you what, he spots deer like way better than me, way better than me. And uh, I mean, as soon as we glassed over there, it was kind of like, wow, that's a nice buck. Is he as nice as you thought? He's nice. Nick, yeah, he's nice. Like everything I wanted. I wanted to get a good one. I wanted to spend one more day up here with Nick solo. And uh, literally that was the dream opportunity where it, it wasn't rushed. We can hike in here, get, get set up and, and do it right. So we did it. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like I put a perfect shot on him. Dream come true, man. That was cool. Look at this. Look at this place. Sweet man, let's go check him out. All right guys, we made it up here. One convenient thing is you can drive the machine. You know, most, most places up here. The buck was bedded right behind here. He was bedded somewhere in, in between these trees right here. You can see in the video. Stood him up and he just turned broadside perfect. He didn't go, what, 40 yards? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty buck. So fun fact, the, the best buck I've shot up here with Nick was 34, and it was literally right outside of this, this line of trees. So basically two slammer bucks right here in the same spot. Dude, they're so pretty. Every single one of them is cool. Even though they're so similar in their own way, they're so unique too. But these are some good coddle points for Hawaii. He was probably matched, but this one's chip. So, beautiful buck, beautiful scenery. Being able to do it with Nick up here. Again, so fortunate to be able to do this. So, wish Chad was with us. Money Mendez, he's experienced a little bit of FOMO. He's texting us all day, wondering what we're doing and what we're seeing. So freaking pretty, these deer. This buck. Classic frame right there. Classic access to frame. All right guys, we uh, made it back home to Utah. So welcome to Salt Lake City. It's a nice day, a little overcast, but I'll tell you what, it is hot and dry. Every time I leave to somewhere that has humidity, just anywhere on the coast like Florida or Hawaii, when I get back, I realize how dry it is here. But I wanted to go over shipping and transporting all our gear and meat because i've seen that each time i do this or each time we really travel anywhere by flying a lot of people ask how do you get the meat back how do you pack your weapon i've traveled a lot now so uh, we're getting pretty good at this stuff so here's some tips and tricks and let me just show you the equipment we take and how to transport the meat okay first up the bow case like i said you got the archery equipment um, some clothing in there that just kind of helps pad it up a little more this is a hard case if you're going to travel i definitely recommend flying with a hard case only this is a skb um, i've had it for a few years it works perfect so thumbs up on the skb and the hard case 
uh, for shipping your archery stuff. And then on the meat, like we're super lucky in this situation in Hawaii to have Nick's place to process, butcher, and freeze it. Cause you just want to send frozen meat only. You don't want a bloody mess. I don't think they allow you to have ice in the cooler. It has to be frozen. That's what I understand anyway. So this time I didn't want to check a bag on the way out. I typically take my Yeti handbag, um, but I knew I was going to have a lot of meat and I wanted to take back as much as I can. So this is 70 pounds of meat in just a cheapy cooler. So the guy sent me back with some smoked meat. That's pork that I can cook up. And you can see this is the top layer. Still frozen. That was probably a 10 hour. God, I've been driving around home fixing my flat tire. So that's probably 10 to, I don't know, 10 or 12 hours of being in the plane and then driving around here. It's thawed out a little, but for the most part, this stuff is frozen. So this is a great way to travel with meat. Freeze it if you have access to it. Um, if not, probably gonna have to take it to a meat processor, let them process it and freeze it for you and then get it shipped later. It's expensive. Just shipping that after all these bags was $400 because it was overweight, 70 pounds, but we got a whole freezer full of meat now. Okay, moving on to the rifle case. Um, I don't know what brand this is, but pretty standard rifle case. It's a hard case with these four latches and then you're gonna want TSA approved locks. Um, you can buy those at Sportsman's Warehouse or Cabela's or any anywhere online. And then BMAC had some clothing in here for padding. He took out the bottom foam cushion. And then he's got his Weatherby 300 wrapped in this uh, protective sheath. And then the scope is wrapped with the Vortex uh, neoprene case. And then this to protect it even more. And then his binoculars and some game bags. So you can see you can... Take out the foam and almost have you extra space for clothing. Then this is pretty typical carry on with clothing. Uh, backpack with GoPros, charging devices, laptop, etc. And then this big old OGO bag. I got my backpack, some shed antlers I decided to bring back. I got a pair of Brian's boots that he left out there. My boots, some mountain ops, a little camp chef stove I never did use. The entire tree saddle setup with the climbing sticks, the harness, and uh, everything included that's all in there and this weighed exactly 50 pounds so for those who travel you know 50 pound bag that's kind of the limit after that you get an over fee um, and then another thing to keep in mind is traveling with the ammo it's got to be in the manufacturing box and uh, so yeah we still got the bullets in the weatherby box so you want to keep that in mind too so make sure you go to the website of whatever airlines you're traveling with to check out their rules and regulations on traveling with a firearm make sure you get there early if it's the first time you definitely want to get there early so you can go through the check-in process but that's how we pack for hunting out of state and flying home the meat which is obviously what we love to hunt so much for so hopefully you guys picked up a tip or two it's a lot of work I'll tell you what a little extra cost to ship all this stuff but back and forth it's always worth it so sincerely hope you guys learned something there and hope you enjoyed this entire series with uh, Chad and Nick. And uh, yeah, if you ever get a chance to hunt somewhere different, hop on it when you can. And I think the next thing for me is just to get ready and go tuna fishing with Chad Mendez out in San Diego. So hope you guys enjoyed the series. I know everybody's getting super pumped for the fall hunts, which I am too. I'm, I've got five elk tags. So the theme of my elk hunt series this year is trying to go five for five. So stick with us through the fall guys. We'll have some amazing hunts. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one.